very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for staying with us on Citizen TV and joining us on this edition of Citizen Live at One. I'm Janet Bogwa. ODM Director of Political Strategy, Wafula Buke, has been appointed as the Executive Director to replace Magere Langat after the assault on him by a section of ODM Nairobi County MPAs. Our senior reporter, Francis Gashuri, is at Orange House and joins us now on phone with the details. Francis, tell us what this means then for Magere Langat. Hi, good afternoon, uh, Janet. Indeed, uh, just a few moments ago, a news conference addressed by uh, Wafula Buke and uh, Rosemary Kariuki has just ended. And uh, Wafula Buke now says uh, he has taken over the leadership of the party as the executive director, though in an acting capacity. And uh, he says his takeover has been sanctioned or is with the blessing of the party leadership and uh, that uh, his first role uh, in his new capacity will be to identify what he calls party moles and those who are not loyal enough to the party and its leader, uh, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. And uh, when we ask him whether uh, uh, his takeover is in uh, contradiction with the position of the National Executive Council meeting yesterday, uh, where Secretary General Professor Jan Nyongon said Magere Langat is still welcome, uh, to uh, resume his position as the uh, executive director. He says, or he uh, or Fula Buke calls uh, 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 the statement a slip of the tongue, and uh, that uh, Magere's ouster is now total, and that uh, there's a change in the, in the leadership of the party. So basically, uh, Janet, uh, as it stands now, uh, uh, Fula Buke says he's the uh, bona fide leader of the uh, executive director of the party. Uh, unless otherwise uh, stated. But for now, he says he's in charge and that uh, his role for, uh, for, move, for the moment uh, will be to bring together the uh, secretariat and its uh, workers uh, to resume uh, from uh, the disruption that was witnessed uh, a week ago uh, by the FCA who manhandled Margaret and taken him from the party headquarters, Janet. All right, Francis Kashuri there uh, telling us those details and uh, confirming, of course, that there will be uh, a gentleman acting in that position and that Magere Langat, as of now, has been ousted. So we'll continue to follow those developments later on in our subsequent newscast as well. Now, six people have been confirmed dead in a grisly road accident along Karatina in Goya Highway. Two others were injured in the head-on collision accident that happened this morning. Aftermath of a grisly road accident along the Karatina Karugoya Highway. A crowd milling around the scene of the accident looks on helplessly at the mangled wreckage of the two vehicles. The regional traffic commander Samuel Ore said that the driver of the Probox car, which was ferrying about 10 people, lost control of the vehicle, leading to a head on collision with an oncoming car. <laughs> The occupant of the second vehicle that was heading to Karatina from Kerugoya, five occupants of the Probox, died on the spot, while another female passenger succumbed to injuries at the Karatina District Hospital. Now, uh, one person has died while seven others have escaped with injuries following uh, a road accident along the Nairobi Naivasha Highway. That incident involved five vehicles including a military petroleum truck, as Martin Umene tells us. This is what remains of vehicles involved in a horrid accident near Naivash on Tuesday. As police tried to establish the extent of the damage, the witnesses watched, perhaps hoping that no lives are lost. However, their fears were confirmed. <laughs> According to our witnesses, the accident occurred after a military vehicle ferrying petroleum products to Nakuru lost control and rammed into four vehicles at Karai, an area they say is a black spot. Ikagonga, you are a fool, Ikakuja, Ikagonga, then I kill him, Ikuina Teremuka Beleake. 
the seven who are injured were taken to Mangonot Medical Services Limited for treatment, with the lady who perished in the accident being taken to the Novasha County Mortuary. Martin Munene, Citizen Live at One. Tragedy indeed. Condolences to the families of those who passed away. Now, tobacco farmers in Kuria, Migori County are up in arms over non-payment of bonuses reportedly amounting to half a billion shillings by a tobacco company in the area. The farmers who also went on strike earlier last month now want the county and national government to step in and address their plight. Transport and business came to a standstill along the Sirare and Migori routes in Migori County after the angry tobacco farmers took to the streets as they marched to a multinational tobacco company in the area, claiming delay of their payments and bonuses, which they say the farm has refused to disburse. Shida ya tobacco, kazi tunafanya na tobacco inakadi, mara kini hera, mbazo tunapata sikuizi, hey, zinakuwa za shida. The farmers say despite tobacco farming fetching huge profits locally and internationally, the company has refused to pay them their dues, which include 2013 and 2014 payments and bonuses. Kama kuna kilio jahaki, kina toka migori kauti, kauti, the demonstrators say they have not been able to take care of their families due to the delay which they claim has rendered them almost destitute despite having worked for the money. They are now seeking the intervention of local and national governments in addressing the matter. Liz Anyango, Citizen Live, Atuan. The Kenyan National Highways Authority, Kenha, has raised the red flag over increased overloading cases by trucks, especially those from neighboring countries. This comes a day after a truck from the Democratic Republic of Congo weighing 156 tons was nabbed at the Gilgi Way Bridge along the Nairobi Nakuru Highway. Officials from Kenya National Highways Authority arrived at the Gilgi Way Bridge on a fact finding mission on the issue of overloading by truck carrying goods to neighboring countries. This truck, which was nabbed by officers manning the way bridge, is said to have been carrying ceramic tiles heading to the Democratic Republic of Congo, weighing 159 tons and overload of 103 tons. That single vehicle is carrying load for four vehicles. It, it was going to use the Northern Corridor. The Northern Corridor is being rehabilitated at more than Kenya shillings 50 billion. Engineer Ngati has also lamented over the lenient fines that those who are found overloading are charged by the courts and wants a stiff penalty to be imposed on those breaking the rules. We are in the process of formulating poly, uh, regulations whereby we will be recommending that such a vehicle be removed from our road through the withdrawal of uh, operating license. <coughs> the driver of the truck has been arrested and will be arraigned in court and will also be charged an extra fee of 170,000 shillings for trying to avoid the way bridge. There is a big decrease and uh, most of it we are seeing the fruits of uh, self-control like uh, the one which was uh, signed in Mombasa the other day. But even, in, even the small players, uh, the sand transporters in some counties. During the incident, Kenha, KRA and police officers opened the trailer. Citizen Live at One. Only about 20% of pupils who enroll in Class Y in Turkana County sit for national exams eight years later. Pastoralism, insecurity, and deplorable education facilities conspire to condemn transition rates in the county to, along the, to among the lowest in Kenya. Salim Bilu was in the county and reports on why, for the average Turkana learner, exams are more than a test on knowledge in the second part of Lessons from Turkana. You have to walk a mile in her shoes, if only to understand Esther Ayai Pill's predicament. 
was hot, she told me, and it is easy to see why. Between her and the deputy headmaster, they teach the 800 pupils in Naro Primary School in Turkana South. We normally teach on, on shift. My, I attend one class, my deputy attend the other one, as other, the rest of the children, we, we allow them to play. When we finish teaching them, we go now in another class. She has seen worse days. There was a time when she was the sole teacher for three years in the school. The population is really growing in large numbers because when two of our neighboring schools were closed down because of insecurity and their classes was broken, it has forced their parents and their children to come. The Teachers Service Commission estimates there's a shortage of 85,000 teachers countrywide and it appears Turkana County must rank among the hardest hit. Most of the teachers employed here are from outside this county and uh, it is not easy for to maintain them in especially far flung places. For this boy, school is so near yet so far. He and his goats scut the periphery of Naro Primary School. His predicament and emblem of a teacher's struggle in Turkana County to keep many like him from dropping out of school. His is a tough choice between joining his peers in school or looking after his father's world. But in a region where tradition reigns supreme, the die seems cast. It only adds to a warring transition rate. Of the 800 pupils in the school, 400 are admitted in Early Childhood Development, ECD. It is the law of a free meal in a region grappling with want that pulls the young ones to school, but ensuring they transition to law and upper primary in a tall order. If, for example, this year, 2014, we have uh, over 30,000 children in standard one, while class eight of the same year, there are only slightly over 6,000. So you can see that dropout rate. But even for those pupils who wish to stay in school and drink from the fountain of knowledge, the wish easily runs dry in a jungle barren of schools and resources. A laptop as promised by the government is the list of their priorities. But still, their thirst for a distant education has not been quenched. Every day they turn up in school in the hope that one day they will at least have a chance to compete fairly with their peers in the other Kenya. Sally Pink, Citizen, live at one. Now, a man in Kiganjo village in Thika, Kiambu County, stabbed his elder brother to death after the deceased allegedly married a sister to his wife. According to witnesses, the issue was the cause of a series of squabbles between the two who are neighbors. They shocked the people of Kiganjo village, Thika, Kiambu County, woke up to Tuesday. Michael Mesopotamia, a man who was well known in this village, had been allegedly stabbed to death by his younger brother, David Karanja. According to witnesses, the scuffle started in the way to familiar manner. The deceased is said to have married his sister-in-law, the sister to the wife of the suspect. And since the marriage, there's been no peace. 
ikawa sasa ni vibaya huko kwa boma wanarusania maneno sasa kile ninaweza kuokesha ama niseme wakati mnaona vijana mnaenda kuoa kuoa kwanza subuzeni mjue ama mkae chini ujue huyu mwanamke hapo waje na ni vibaya kuleta mahali ndugu yako ametoa bibi unaenda tena kuoa by the time the police arrived at the scene of the murder the suspect had disappeared bradangu alitukuta pale asubuhi kasini akaniambia wamekosana na na bradangu wao mwingine akaniambia niende nishuruhishe hayo maneno kwa na siku anajua ameficha panga ndani ya jacket the more he tried to intervene the more things got out of hand the body of the deceased was taken to the level 5 hospital mortuary chikuski citizen at one a tragic ending there you're watching citizen live at one stay with us we're back after this break